before we get into today's bachelor party, let me tell you about the latest podcast on the Ringer Podcast Network. It's the Dave Chang Show. If you're a fan of Momofuku or Ugly Delicious or any other David Chang property, please subscribe to the Dave Chang Show. That is his new podcast. And it begins with an episode of him telling Bill Simmons about how he found the location in the other early beginnings of his new restaurant, Major Domo, here in L.A. It will be a series of conversations, sometimes with Bill, also with other guests. And who knows what's to come? He's an eminently creative guy, and we're so excited to have him on this network. In fact, I can't even believe it that I get to be alongside David Chang. So again, listen to The Dave Chang Show. Subscribe to The Dave Chang Show. I don't think you'll regret it. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. It's been so many weeks of no Bachelor talk. I feel like Ari left my life ages ago, and we haven't even returned to the source material Today that changes. Old friend of the podcast, Nick Vial is here. Hi, Nick. Hi. What's up? I've missed you. I've missed you too. I actually both, haven't seen you in a long time. Both professionally and personally. Totally. I haven't seen you in, in quite some time. And like, I've been busy. So have you. I know because you keep popping up on like Instagram stories of other Bachelor people. And I'm like, oh, that's what Nick's up to. <laughs> I love how, you know, obviously we do that a lot as, as Bachelor people. And we always have a tendency of posting with each other because we know... The people who follow keeps the us. interest alive. Keeps the interest, but then people assume that's all we do. Right? Is it? Well, I mean, how many times have you hung out with me and other bachelor people? Um, Zero. I mean, so, you including know. Jared. You've only seen Jared once. That's not true. <laughs> many, that's completely incorrect. How many times have you seen Jared? Like four or five. Really? Yes. So Jared does come around with you, but what else have you been up to? If you're not just hanging out with bachelor people, um, acting. Just, I've been acting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, you go on Ben and Ashley's podcast and they ask you to. I've done that. I've been trying to get an invite on that show and I can't get it. <laughs> they won't have me. I think they only want to have members of Bachelor Nation. Yeah. I mean, it's not Ben or Ashley's call, I don't think. Well, I would like for it to be their call because I've asked. And Ben's like, I was like, yeah, of course. And then, of course, well, he's, he's a people Ben's, pleaser. Yes. So he never gives me the, the harsh reality of no, it's never going to happen. In Ben's role, he probably would have you on. I would love it. Still love Ben, in case you're wondering. I do, too. Okay, great. Did you watch Winter Games? I did not. Why not? So you're not watching these shows anymore? No, I, I just didn't. I don't know, for whatever reason, I I didn't. Did you hear that it was great? I I didn't hear anything. What? That's I, not true. You're I'm really, being totally honest. How is I mean, that possible? I will, I'm definitely planning on watching Becca's season. I will watch Paradise. As a friend of Ashley and Ben, how, how, did you say to them, hey, like, how was your experience? Did you meet Kevin, Ashley's former? I did meet Kevin. Did you like him? I didn't dislike him. Okay. Were you surprised that she f- that a relationship worked out for her out of one of these shows? Did it work out? Well, temporarily. More so than ever before. I, I suppose it played out, if I had to have predicted how it played out, I would have probably predicted that. That, that they got together. And then they dated for like two months. months. I mean, he lives in Canada. Out. I know. He does live in Canada. So. I, like, I didn't watch. I mean, I heard how Luke did not come across well in the finale. Do you know Luke? I've met him a few times. Do you like him? I don't really know him enough to have an interest. He's now like at war with ABC, basically. I, my impression of Luke is that he, you know, uh, there was a reason why he ended up not being The Bachelor, even mm-hmm. though he was probably at the time... The rumor I no heard choice. is he, well, he was asking for too much money. Uh, it was a combination of things. Okay. I mean, um, I think some of the stuff you saw of his personality kind of started to come out. Well, at the same time, you know, he like, ghosted. It's that's not that what ha- he actually seemed better on Winter Games than I had been led to believe. Like, and he like found love with this one woman. But she, I mean, in, fair, in fairness to Luke, didn't she live like in Finland or something? Yes, I, that's <laughs> correct. However. You could text back, hey, like not oh, interested. Oh, totally. And then I, I saw a clip of, of the finale where he looked bad, and I'm just surprised he just didn't say, listen, you're great, but you live across the world. Yeah. He I, didn't want to have the hard conversation, which wasn't even that hard. It's an easy out. It's an easy out. Yeah. Um, but he just kind of kind of went dead-eyed, and um, I did see that. Is he active in Bachelor Nation? I I really don't keep tabs on him. I know he... So then he's not that active. I'm saying, like, do you interact with him? Does he, do you cross yeah, paths? Yeah, but I don't interact with everyone. I think we all have our groups of friends. Obviously, I'm I out think here you're in LA. In the, yeah, but LA is the ground zero now. It used to be Chicago. But there's a lot of LA people that I don't hang out with. 
Like who's who's out here that I can you tell know? You, I mean, I hang out with Jared. I hang out with Ashley. You know, I hang out with Dean. Dean, I want to talk about Dean in a minute. Um, I want to meet Dean. When as Ben well. comes in town, we try to get together. When Wells is in town, we try to get together. Wells, he hit um, he hit the jackpot with Sarah Highland. Yeah, I mean, I've, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Sarah yet. You haven't, but I they seem to be in love. That's so crazy and cool. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I just more personally, he seems really happy, so I'm happy for him. You know, they they fit one of my theories about dating. Which is? That people are always like, there's like a joke about couples, like siblings are dating because they look alike or whatever. <laughs> but that that is not a joke. Like, it is real. Like, they look like they could be siblings. It, sure. And it, it just happens Like, like if you met lot. them and you're like, hey, they're siblings. Yeah. You, you would have been like, oh, okay. And I think it like speaks to like just an innate narcissism in humans. That just like it comes up a lot. Or like people also who look like they're dogs. Yeah, that's like less in my world because I don't take dogs seriously. But like, wait, what? What does that mean? I just dogs are not in part of my world. They're not a part of mine, but I just think that's like a bold statement. I'm and, fine with it. This is my podcast. <laughs> wow, <laughs> whatever. It's been documented. <laughs> yeah, edit that out. No, definitely will <laughs> not be editing that out. You won't even censor yourself. It's I don't. You know, this is a freewheeling conversation loosely tied to The Bachelor. All right. Yeah, um, exact, exactly. So, yeah, so those are, and again, like, I will then run into other people, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't say they're in my s- circle of friends that I would, say, reach out to and say, let's grab a beer, you know? Right. Um, I've I've met some of um, the women on Ari season recently. They seem very nice. Okay, um, who did you meet? I've met Kendall and Cien and Becca. Baby I Becca. Met, I met Bibiana once. Oh, cool. She was a good on I'm a fan of Bibiana. Yeah, I like her. She's cool. That's cool. Like, what made you say that? She's just, she seems very down to earth. She's older than I thought. She's she's 30. 30. Yeah. Uh, She's very attractive, and she doesn't take herself seriously. It's funny because when you watch a show, she obviously, my my nickname for her was No Chill Mm. because she didn't demonstrate that she had any chill. I think she got a racially unfair at it. I, I think she was made to seem like a a spicy Latina. She actually is very level-headed and seems to... Not take herself too seriously, which I think is a very refreshing quality in someone. Sometimes people can fake that. I think sure. everyone, you know, there's nothing more unattractive than false um, self deprecation. Sure. You know, when people try to be like. You have you a know, big grin on your face. Like, who does that that you're thinking of right a now? A lot of people. Like, just give one example. Oh, come on. Come on, do it. I mean, the Josh Murray was probably oh, of course. the number one. Of you course. Know, well, he funny. was playing a character the whole time he was on TV. Well, that's just who he is. Sure. Well, you know, when someone says, like, when a really good-looking person says things like, oh, I'm just, I'm ugly and unattractive and overweight. It's just like, dude. No one says that, good, but sure. I, I think on The Bachelor, it's more like— Josh would say that all the time. I don't know if he, he does. He would talk about how— he's overweight? He would, yeah. It would, it would be like, dude, if, if you, you're a good-looking dude. You might be a lot of other things, but you're, you're an attractive guy. And he yeah. would always, like, try to be— um, like modest by he was handsome. having false humility. What's Josh up to? Do you I have know? No idea. I don't believe that. Come on. What, what do you think? I keep tabs. <laughs> yeah, I, really, I, I keep tabs on both my enemies and my friends. Uh, he's not my enemy. I, I'm more or less indifferent. Okay. I, I don't hang out with him, but I don't have like a strong hatred towards the guy. You know, he, I believe he was on the MTV Challenge. I heard he did show. a reality TV show. Yes, I, he was on the challenge. I don't follow him on social media. I, I quite honestly haven't. He's been kind of quiet lately. So there's this development on MTV, which is like they're they're integrating people from other shows. I saw that. Didn't Chase franchises. do something? Yes. So thank you. Ch- Chase is on X on the Beach. Have you? Heard I, I really disapprove of his Instagram. Oh, Chase's. Yeah. He. I. I haven't looked at it, but I'm going to pull it up right now. He. He was on Caitlyn's season. There's with a. You? No. He was on JoJo's season. There JoJo's a, season. There's a. Right. There's a. There's a group chat. Um. That we have with. A uh, handful of guys, a lot of which come stem from Caitlyn season. Okay, and there's a few kind of additions. Um, that kind of uh, the genesis of it was we were in a fantasy football league. I actually heard about this. I don't pay too much attention to it because it's usually in a. It's mostly JJ. Um, JJ Lane. Yeah, sending us just nonsense most of the day. But once in a while, anytime Chase decides to post a picture of his ass um, or some sort of really tasteless. He's got a lot of abs photos. Well, it's not even. I mean, it's just it's well, it's he, a little strong in terms of unnecessary nudity. He also dated Tommy Laren. I heard about that. Yeah, so now he's on X on the Beach, which is a show that um, 
MTV imported from England, which I wholeheartedly support because this season on the challenge, they had British people and they were wonderful additions. Sure. Just like, just love the Brits. And so it's like, it has people from all these different shows. So Chase is on it. Jasmine, who famously put her hands on your your neck and like fake strangled you is on it. So Um, I I mean, I kind of get the qual, the the type, the type of people they're going for. (laughs) So would you go on that show? Come on. Really? Just, is, do you think asking. that? Do you think that little of me to even ask? Um, that's not what I uh, think of you know, but I felt a, a, an obligation just to, to You're just confirm doing your due diligence to qual- just, yeah, just to make it clear that you wouldn't go on. So yeah, Chase is on it. Jasmine's on it. Would you go on like if MTV just like was like we're gonna do our own version of Survivor? Would you do that? Well, no, that you're the one who told me you sh- I should do the Survivor and I wouldn't do that. So why would That's I do true. an MTV version of it? <laughs> well, I just think it's interesting that MTV is like filling this space that they're like, oh, well, there's all these people who already have big followings. Sure. And they we don't necessarily have like a show for them, but there's kind of like creating like a catch-all of people who already uh, are like well-known entities. I just, just generally, I don't see myself being a contestant on any reality TV show. Ever again. Ever again. I mean, there's exceptions to maybe every rule. But as a cast member, like, I don't think I would go on. I mean, not. I don't think. I wouldn't. What did you think of, of our season of The Bachelor? I found it more entertaining than I think some people thought. I mean, it wasn't a highly rated season. Obviously, I thought the end was exceptional TV. And I think... Totally it, agree with you. I think... Uh, is is not great as Ari was as The Bachelor. Um, he did the show a favor and did Becca a huge favor by just not being smart about how he handled things. Seriously, um, it, I did honest, anyone did I anyone think, approach you about filming your breakup with Vanessa? It happened on the more normal timeline, like after the fact, after you get you guys gave it an honest try. Um. There was always conversations about like, what if we did that? And I just shot it down right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, again, you have to, which is kind of to the point of producers are always going to ask. They're always going to feel you out um, in terms of what you're willing or not willing to do. But we all have the right to say no, right? You know, because um, again, a lot of people gave the show criticism for filming it or, or blindsiding Becca in terms of doing that, um, I don't fault them for it. I just, sure. I fault Ari because... Yeah, he shouldn't have agreed to it. He, But at the same time, he did Becca a huge favor. I guess so, by getting her the, bachelor, the Bachelorette gig. I mean, I, I think I think that, that instance is going to maybe help kind of boost up the ratings because they've taken a bit of a dip the past couple of seasons. I think, uh, I think Becca has a chance to be an incredibly popular Bachelorette. Um, and I think she's has she has a lot of momentum and a huge storyline, all predicated on that one episode. I mean, let's be honest. Like before that episode, everyone was just kind of like, she wasn't even the m- most popular Becca. Right? Oh, no. Well, I think people liked her more, but Be- Becca, we call I call her either Baby Becca or Becca. Sure, but it was she just was like Becca's like nice. F- it was like, oh yeah, sure. She everyone was liked her. Yeah, she was boring. They did, they had no. There was no strong opinions of her. It was like. She's nice. Which she, one is she? And she got very little airtime. Like, yeah, very little. Very little. And so all of a sudden, overnight, literally, every, I mean, everyone adored her. Every, you couldn't, like, oh, I love her. I mean, um, so I'm I've, hoping for a good season of the show. I've, I've heard it's going to be good. Really? What have you heard? I haven't heard any details, just that, um, well, I mean, you know how we, me, Dean, and Jerry did that kind of spoofy recap? Yes, that was funny. We plan on continuing to do that all oh. next season. Every week? Shameless plug. I think so, yeah. On, it, who, it, it on was, whose Instagram? Uh, it will be kind of let off of mine, but it, mm. it went viral on Facebook. Cool. Got like 8 million impressions. Wow. That's Six, a lot. 6.3 million Did you monetize views. that? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, oh, so we'll, you're looking for a sponsor is what you're saying? No. I mean, you know, well, who knows? But it's just like our fans liked it. We're just going to have fun with it. Um, who will you be playing? Becca? Well, I played Becca, so I think I'll keep yeah, playing keep Becca. Playing. Okay. Uh, Jared and Dean can be your suitors. We're going to do a bunch of different, uh, you know. Special guests from other people from Bachelor Nation? Just listen, you know. We're, it's going to be, I think people will be entertained. Who's I've, your crew? Like, who films it? Um, my buddy Kyle. But it was because it I have this, my my best friend Kyle. I don't know, have you met Kyle? No, you've talked about him, though. Uh, that was, it was, we came up with the idea a couple years ago of like, you know, because obviously all of us Bachelor people are always thinking about doing podcasts and recaps and. Sure. 
And so we had this idea of like, why don't we recap it by reenacting it with like terrible wigs and, and just kind of spoof it and just kind of have fun with it. And so that was a couple of years ago. And then on the finale, you know, Dean wanted to kind of do a recap thing. And I'm like, well, let's do this. And then we did it. And then surprisingly, it ended up being kind of a, a little bit of a hit. Um, so I've been kind of texting the producers being like, hey, are you guys going to give us a lot of content? Because basically work, to, work with. to work with, right? Yeah. Because the better the season is, the the more terrible choices her suitors make, the better the it is. More, for the you. better it is. You know, I want I want a Clinton JJ kind of oh my god kind of situation. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the more people, more guys willing to be idiots. Um, because I mean, you know, no one really wants to make. We're not trying to make fun of anyone. We're just trying to have some fun with it. So we just hope that there's situations that are fun to to recap. I feel like the Bachelor finale was so momentous and so groundbreaking that I'm like worried about the show because I'm just Why? like because won't live up to the hype. I just feel I'm worried I'm going to be let down because like there was so much drama that you like truly can't script and whatnot um, that I'm just concerned and then I, I'm worried about some of her dudes. Like I've I, heard Becca is Ben Higgins nice. Hmm. Um, I like that in Ben Higgins. Do I like that in a Bachelorette? I don't know. I just heard, you know, and, and what I mean by that is like, it was when I was filming the show, it was always a priority for me because like just the crew, it's their jobs, it's their livelihood. And mm -hmm. it can be really stressful to be the lead. So I always, no matter what, tried to remind myself to always say please and thank you. But yeah. you get stressed out and like sometimes you just, you get pushed a lot. Yeah, and yeah. Some, so sometimes you just get frustrated and you get a little snippy and, um, Ben was just notorious for just no matter what, always being Ben. Yeah. And I've heard Becca is that sweet. And I don't know how that's going to come across on the show, but just the, the the cast really likes her. All three of you are Midwestern, and you would think that. Yeah. I guess. I guess you're not a monolith, you Midwesterners. Well, I, again, it wasn't like I wasn't nice, but you know how Ben is. Yeah, but you— Ben goes out of his way no he's matter what. He's a people pleaser, yeah, yeah, at all times. And know. at times, I'm willing to— be I wish you would. Add, I wish I. I'd be like Ben. That's gonna get you in trouble. You can't please people. So like, just just. It can get you in trouble. But anyway, that's a whole nother. Besides, besides, besides the um, point. But I guess my point of bringing that up, I think Becca. I think your entertainment won't specifically come from Becca. Yeah. The the, the Becca's value is going to be in the fact that we're all rooting for. Her. You know, we want her to find love. We want her to kind of be able at the end of it, be able to stick it to Ari. You know. That's true. One thing I'm I'm wondering about. And I've never really gotten like real confirmation on this. Is how exactly does casting work? Like, how much do they take into account the leads' um, preferences? Probably not as much as we would leads like. would like. <laughs> like, and, and for you and for Becca, it's similar because you were kind of cast like kind of like more last minute. Like, it was well, generally that. Um, it is definitely generally that with um, the Bachelorette because like they don't really know who it's going to be for a while. And so like how do they Mine find the people? Mine was extremely last minute. Yeah, so it was Ari. Uh, yes, Ari is like eight days before it was announced. I've been led to believe. For example, I mean, I just heard on you know because when they I think they when they were casting for Luke, I've heard things like they had a lot of you know twenty two, twenty three year olds from the south, the south, and I think they generally knew that well one too young for me yeah. and be, you know, just personalities might not match. So they try a little bit, but there's only so much they can do. I think generally speaking, they're, they're hoping that the leads really into four. Into four out of 30 or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I mean, and again, it's not like they pick four, you know, they don't know either. It's right. a crapshoot. Right. Um, I know. Like how can you really, you know, unless you're like an expert matchmaker, which I don't even believe in really. But sometimes it's tough. I, sometimes the people they would like to get either don't pass the medical um, or they have careers and jobs that they can't get out of, <laughs> you know? The medical part has really come to light lately. Like, a lot of people didn't know, I think, about, like, that kind of, like, level of testing. It did come out a few years ago with the real world where they're, like, if you had STDs, you couldn't be on the show. Of course, the Bachelor tests for it as well. Yeah. But for some reason, that's, like, getting a lot of attention. Why? I don't, it seems like common sense. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Like, despite the fact that this is a show that is the the more popular version, The Bachelor is populated by women. It's like still adheres to so many of like these very like retrograde norms. Like you can't talk like people don't they don't talk about sex on the show like explicitly they ever do now ever. I guess so, but like not really. Like your season, there was no like sex talk. 
at all. What do you? Are you kidding? Oh, I guess it was Corinne. I forgot about her. Not even Corinne. Like Liz showed up. I had oh, to literally Liz, say right. to twenty oh, women, "I've had sex with her." <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Good point. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, but not, it, I'm not saying that because but it's I fun for me. Downplay, but. It's so downplayed that I forgot about it. I just feel like sexuality is like still somehow taboo. And so therefore... It, well, I mean, again, I'm not saying this like I'm tooting my horn by any means, but like until the whole Andy and me thing yeah. it wasn't talked about. Since then, it's now become a thing. It's true. And also now, Paradise is so sexually they, charged. Now they have, they have the... Um, before Chris Souls' season, they never um, did the... You know how they do the whole wake up in the morning after uh-huh. the fantasy suite. Uh-huh. Now they do that because of what happened, you know, what happened between Becca and Chris. What happened? Well, what happened is, I don't know what happened, but obviously they had, well, nothing I don't think actually happened, but in terms <laughs> of they had discussions that changed the landscape. Oh. And I guess the mood the next morning was awkward and it, whatever. I don't know the details, mm-hmm. but it's like, well, shoot, we needed, you know, that's why they had to, they, I think it was people, viewers were confused. I see. You know, and so they had to like, that's why, you know, Chris pulled Becca and had this discussion. So I think they started doing that. But that's, you're right. They don't really bring up sex there because no one's really. No one wants to talk about it. And as far as the fantasy suite goes, they're, you know, sometimes there's not as much sex as people think. Sure. Yeah. So now it does, it does seem like that. It's like. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. It just depends. (laughs) Um, it's just so, it's just so funny. Like you would think it would just be a bigger part of what they talk about, but it's really not. Even in Paradise, like the official narration of how the show goes, they don't even talk about it that much. Well, I also because I think a lot of you know people will joke about Paradise, be like it's Sex Island, and everyone people people it doesn't happen as much as people think. That's you know, true. if people couple up, there's a good chance they might at some point hook up. But it doesn't mean it's like people like describe it as some sort of orgy, which it's not. Doesn't it, doesn't seem like that. And in, in any way, it's not even close to that. How much so. do you sleep when you're in paradise? Like what, like six hours a night, four or five? More than you do on Bachelor. Hmm. Well, that's because you have so much obligation as like the the lead, or if you're on a date. If you're on an off day though during the Bachelor, how much do you sleep? Like in like in like week three. Not the bachelor, you're like the contestant. It depends on who you are. I mean, there's a lot of downtime, so you might just take a lot of naps. Like Corinne, she napped. I mean, like actual naps. Um, <laughs> did you work out a lot while you were on the show? No, it's one of those things that you honestly get tired from doing nothing. Sure, like you get like okay. mentally stressed. Of yeah, of course. so even though you have a lot of time, you're like the thought of doing a push up is just exhausting. Yeah, I actually I want to hear more about more about that, but first I want to tell you about Hotel Tonight. I actually used Hotel Tonight. It's a great app. People, you should really use it. You did? Where'd yeah. you go? Um, sometimes when I go home to Milwaukee, and then I'll swing down to Chicago for a couple nights, and I'll, just, like, oh. I'll go on Hotel Tonight and get a cool. cheap hotel. Well, other people, when they're in Chicago, they can do the same thing. If you're the type that's always looking for a bigger, better deal, you've got to get the Hotel Tonight app. I mean, Nick just endorsed it. Hotel Tonight partners with awesome hotels to help them sell their unsold rooms, which means you get amazing deals. It's actually true. Their name is Hotel Tonight, but you can actually book in advance. You can book next week tonight, or you can book next month tonight. All it takes is 10 seconds, just three taps, and a swipe. There's no long, endless list of a zillion hotel choices. Hotel Tonight only shows you the best deals at the best hotels. Perfect whether you're a planner or like to leave things to the very last minute. And with Hotel Tonight's HT Perks program, the more you book, the better the deals get. Unlike other loyalty programs where you're trapped into staying at boring hotel chains. I've used Hotel Tonight and it has been extremely successful. I stayed in a great Marriott in New Orleans. I stayed at the Palazzo in Las Vegas. It's never let me down. It is a great app. I even daydream about potential staycations I could take just by checking out the hotels in Santa Monica. And sometimes I do it. Highly recommend it. So start scoring amazing deals at incredible hotels and download the Hotel Tonight app now. Let's talk more about The Bachelor and the associated world. You were talking about the downtime on the show. What If you're not really a people person, how do you fill that time? Like, is there an option? Like, can you read? Well, if you don't, if you're not a people person at all, I don't think you really go on the show. Well, I mean, there's various degrees of people. People? Sure. Someone like Courtney Robertson, who, by the way, really, like, aired out Ari. Did you hear about that? I did not. She went on Reality Steve's podcast. Mm-hmm. And just sort of talked about it, like her really on and off relationship with Ari, and then how he got a girlfriend, and she like had to. Did she sell him out, kind of thing? Kinda. That's a shame. It just it was weird because it seemed like they were good friends, and I just feel like. Uh, I mean, again, I don't know the details. It just seems like a very opportunistic thing. 
Did you did you follow any of the rumors about Ari that came out like after the show aired? No. I find those mostly to be a lot to do about nothing. What Ari seemed to be for me, and I met him once, I just think he's a poor decision maker. Yeah. Um, for example, you know, when, when baby Becca, as you call her, posted uh, those DMs that Ari sent. Yes. Ari is an idiot for writing Becca for several <laughs> fronts, right? And yes. After the words. Um, because perception can be reality. And in that situation, he was, uh, you know, in a committed relationship with one of the girls and he's DM and, and that you read the DMs and they seemingly seem in, innocent. Now it's still a, a bad choice on his part. Um, I don't know. You know, like I, I, I don't know Ari, so I can't say, but I also think a lot of those things are people are looking for things. Maybe he's just a bad decision maker. What I've heard about Ari is, is that he's kind of like does his own thing and he might just be, I don't know. So people want sometimes them, people act a certain way. And if it, you know, they make a lot to do about nothing. I, again, I don't know. If, I don't think that makes Ari a bad guy. I just think he's kind of does his own thing and and gets him in trouble publicly more than he actually is a terrible person or something. It seems like he just really likes the ladies. He's not necessarily a one-woman man, and he uh, just, you know, likes to do his own thing. I guess, but it's, you know, it's, again, like I'm single now. I've have been other than on the show I've been single for most of my 30s I was in relationships most of my 20s so like in some circles there's perceptions that I'm that as well but when you really get into my dating history well I've been single so like I go on dates and meet women I don't quite like being single but in the meantime like you know like I think I just think people can they can take any story that they they want, you know. That's true. I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I kind of roll my eyes on some of that stuff, especially when it's like a Courtney Robinson Reality Steve podcast because it's like they're incentivized to, you know, play off the the narrative. that like It's just, it's almost like because it's Bachelor, you're supposed to like only ever be in a relationship. Sure. You're supposed to literally go from one relationship to another. And if you like end up dating a handful of people and like break up with them, you're – somehow all of a sudden a player. The rumors about him, though, are not that he's... Dated. I don't know the details. It's not that he's, like, sequentially dated several women. It's that he was hooking up with multiple women who didn't know about the others at the same time, which is crappy. I guess. And then, I mean, some, and then some other guy wrote, like... Some guy on, uh, went on Reddit and just wrote, like, a really long screed about how he was dating this girl... And then she – and he took her back to his home because he was dating her. And it turns out he was neighbors with Ari. And the woman was like, oh, I know that guy. And then Ari, like, tried to, like, sabotage their relationship. And apparently it That's worked. Weird. It was, like, a really long Reddit thread. There's a, There just seems to be, like, a, a – pattern? A, a, sure. A pattern. I, I, and also a lot, of, a lot of people, like, angry enough to, like, post these long things on Reddit. Well, one thing I don't understand generally about men, and I see, it seems like a lot of guys in Bachelor Nation do this – I'll never for the life of me understand why men will exaggerate their feelings towards women for the sake of um, trying to get something out of it, if you know what I mean. Sure. In terms of like, if a guy's dating someone, they might exaggerate their feelings because maybe they you know, f- just want a physical relationship. Right, and then that often will get men in trouble because they lead these women on and mm-hmm. the women feel misled sure. and scorned and then there's this pushback and it seems like maybe Ari is guilty of that where it's he's just not direct in terms of you know if you just want to like hook up then we should maybe be upfront about that yeah I think perhaps he's not well, neither of us can say neither of us have dated or hooked up with him probably yeah. won't either of us I don't know I mean, clearly Ari is not the best decision maker and maybe just in generally not totally Intelligent? I don't know. You know, that's funny. I'm glad you brought that up. I was having a conversation with my colleague, Amanda Dobbins, who you can hear me with on Jam Session every other Wednesday on Channel 33. You're, like, not allowed to say that people are not that intelligent or, like, not that smart. And, like, I think you should be able to say that, like, perhaps— People are stupid? Yeah, perhaps Ari is not very smart. That's okay. Sure. I mean, listen, I'm just not trying to, like, offend anyone. You're trying to not shade anyone. You're very political. I'm not political. And I'm was, not generally political. I was quite mean about Ari for most of the season. I, I, in life, I'm cl- you know I'm not <laughs> political at all. I just um, I, I'm not trying to like basically kick a guy while he's down. Have you met him? Once. Hmm. You seemed to be fine. 
Okay. So after Jared, it seems like you hang out with Dean the most in Bachelor Nation. The most? Um, he lives I've, in L.A. You live I've in gotten LA. to know Dean. I think he's a delightful young man. Did um, you get to meet Leslie before they broke I've up? I've never met Leslie. Really? No. I've she doesn't done, live here. I've, I've never met her either, but I would really like to. I But I'm concerned. This is, I'll Why? share a concern. You can tell me if it's correct or not. Baby Becca Baca came here twice on to be on my twice. podcast. Two times. Mm. The second time, she told a story about Dean. And it, actually, she didn't tell a story about Dean. I asked her about Dean. And she was like, nope, can't talk about it. And I was like, uh-oh, let me guess. He slid into your DMs. And she was like, I can't say. And then. Well, I've maybe heard the opposite. Really? That she slid into his DMs? I don't know. I can't confirm, but... Because I've been really worried. I really like Leslie. Ever since she was on Sean Lowe's season, I've been a fan. I told Rob Mills back then that she should have been The Bachelorette. And I... Who? Leslie Murphy. Yeah, I don't... Okay, but that's besides the point. We'll come back to that in a minute. And so I've always really liked her and been a fan. And I was worried that the conversation with Becca, in which she talked about how... Dean slid into her DM. Well, she actually didn't say it. I guessed it, and she implied that could have been correct. Uh, I'm sure she probably implied a lot of things. You can imply a lot of things and have it not be, you know, because when you imply things, you're like, well, I don't know. And then people can think what they want, and it's like, you're not lying. And I don't know the details. I don't know if they've even discussed in DM for sure, but... Um, so I just want to make sure that didn't this play way, into I don't, the breakup with I, Leslie. I, I, I'm, no, and I guarantee... <laughs> that was a really hard no. <laughs> I can guarantee you that in no way is... Has Dean in any way ever aggressively pursued baby Becca? I feel like I can say that with confidence, but I don't know for, you know, like this is the impression I have. Does he know that she's been talking about him on her own? I have no idea. Interesting. I can't believe you didn't get to meet Leslie. Are you upset? No, not even a little. Is Dean dating anyone now? Not that I'm aware of. Why do they break up? I, I don't know. People break up. Okay. I mean, so you, I, you do know, but you choose to not share it with me. I don't right really now. know the details. I mean, <laughs> my guess is, is, they dated for 12 days on uh, a, a show. <laughs> I think uh, it was she, two weeks, but okay. She lives in Arkansas or something? She, tra- she travels a lot. <laughs> Fine, but like, and Dean's also not a, trying to be a, a travel blogger. Um, <laughs> she also... I just love how people are like, why did they break up, break up as if there's some sort of like, needs to be some major re- reason as if they were married. They, they've they known each other for less than two months. Yeah, I understand, but here's a few... Here, they Instagram about each other a lot, like a lot, which I just think is a bad idea. Like, you got to have six months under your belt before you Instagram about each other, in my unless, opinion. Unless you meet in The Bachelor and you're doing it for the likes. I guess that's true. <laughs> and then they went on um, they went on Ben's trip to Honduras together. Okay. The coffee trip. Sure. So Well, Ben and Dean are friends, and <laughs> Leslie is a travel blogger, so it's probably mutually beneficial. I don't know. Wow, you're painting a picture here that I'm not sure I'm happy about. What do you mean? I'm not— That they're doing it all for the likes. No, 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 I'm not saying that. But, like, I think they really dated. I think there was a—from a, a, what I know, they both—there was a—they a, liked each other. But it also didn't—apparently, it didn't work out. They, You know, you get to know people. Um, I don't know the details of who ended what relationship. But right. I don't think there's— N- nothing dramatic has to happen. I don't know. I'm not saying it was disingenuous, but I mean, in terms of like why you, you suggested that bachelor people or anyone should abstain from posting <laughs> on social media until they can like validate that they're going to last. Now, while if, in my, in my case, in my life now, I'm very careful about that. Like I won't, you don't post anything but yourself really. Well, I post with my friends, but I'm very particular about like posting with any woman that someone might suggest I'm dating because I just don't want to deal with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm careful about that. So, um, but if Dean and Leslie meet on a show, like everyone already knows they're together. (laughs) So I don't think it's in bad taste to, to, to keep posting. Does that make sense? Sure. Uh, Yeah, of course it makes sense. The whole thing was just really, uh, I don't know. I was bummed. I wanted them to work out. I don't know why. I just felt, why? I felt invested. Um, how did Jared feel about Ashley and Kevin? You'd have to ask Jared. Got it. So you are telling me you don't discuss this stuff with your friends. I don't believe you. Well, I, 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 I'll tell you what I don't do is discuss my friend's <laughs> business without their permission <laughs> on your podcast. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about what I know about Becca's season. Okay. So this is unfortunate. How do you know this? From the internet. I don't ha- actually have not. I Confirmed. don't like to be spoiled because as a commentator, 
Sure. I yeah. think it corrupts my product if I know it's going to happen. But I am a I'm an avid TMZ reader. And Becca's right. gone so mainstream as a result of the Ari breakup that they had a post yesterday about one of her hometowns. And I was really pissed. Why? Because mm-hmm. now I know, like, one person who goes far. Oh. But, T, I think it's fine. I mean, it's almost impossible for me not to be spoiled just because I'm— You're in Bachelor Nation. So in Bachelor Nation, it's like you just hear it. But for me, I still find value in watching the show. And I also, also, um, as long as you don't know who the winner is, it's pretty, like, it's, even for you, you've watched the show from the beginning. And I think even subconsciously as a viewer, I think you could probably figure out the top four in two episodes. Probably. Yeah, probably. Just the way. The way it's portrayed and. You know, so I think you just kind of figure it out, you know. And as far as, and it really comes down to, you could probably figure out even final three or final two. It's just sometimes it's hard to predict the winner. Sure. Um, um, it still makes all the other stuff entertaining. Have you met Tia? I have not. Because she's in L.A., I think, sometimes. Um, they're all in L.A. sometimes. <laughs> I, think, I think they're all uh, I think, she, I think fr- they're casting Raven. for Paradise. Um, so I think they're all in L.A. right now. Oh. Would you go, would you go in Paradise as the bartender to take over Wells' role? Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. It was fun. I mean, I would probably go down to like— Sayulita. Uh, listen, I loved Paradise because I went down and told some jokes and gave people <laughs> dating advice most and of the time. And got to be on The Bachelor after and, that. And then and get, got to be The Bachelor. Um, I think Wells is doing a great job. I don't think they need me, but— um, But so. would he go back? Probably. I don't know. Why not? Why wouldn't you? That's a fun role. He doesn't have to date anyone. He gets to, like, make cocktails, and he's basically— you you get. Like in that in that scenario, he's kind of above the fray. That's true. Okay, fair enough. Um, tell me one thing that people don't know about being the former bachelor that is interesting and weird. I don't know, just about like what it's like to be the bachelor it's out hard. in the wild. It's so hard. Do you still get stopped a lot? Yes. I've been with you and you get stopped. It happens a lot. Doesn't have I mean LA is better than most cities. Does it happen but more in Chicago? Worse. Sure. Okay. Well, it's just because less access to celebrities. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about Kanye and President Trump? Um, I feel very negatively about it. You know he's going to be on Celebrity Family Feud. Kanye? Yeah. He refused. He didn't show up, I think, is what no, happened. No, he showed up. Oh, I he did? was personally affected by it. You were? How? Yeah. Tell the story. I, I got, we got bumped by Kanye. Wow. Yeah. Did that episode air yet? I thought the I Kardashian thought episode about, I thought you knew about that. I didn't. Tell the story. Just it's fine. We'll tell Rob Mills or you're telling it and he won't care. Rob, okay. Rob's, I think, very excited about the Kanye and President Trump stuff. That's good for him. Because he plugged Celebrity Family Feud. He did? We got a call uh, a couple weeks ago um, on a Friday, and we were like, hey, or I got a call. Do you want to do Celebrity Family Feud? And I was like, eh, Who called you? Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, it does matter, but fair enough. Just someone from ABC. I don't know. Okay. They're like, hey, do you and some of your Bachelor buddies want to do Celebrity Family Feud? I'm like, eh, I don't know. And they're like, well, it would be against the Kardashians. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So immediately I was just like surprised. So we're like, sure. But the whole time it seemed very last minute, and it was, because it was going to happen the next day. Okay. Also seemed like, why? Like, why would they want to do it with us kind of thing? I don't know. But, you know, so we, we agreed to do that. It was all set up. We, it was all, we had all our kind of, they gave us all the arrangements and things like that. And then, like, at 10 o'clock at night, they're like, hey, sorry, we're, we cut it because Kanye said he wants to do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was like, I get it. <laughs> but wow. It all, but then I heard, because then a report came out, because obviously they posted about it. And then I heard, and it all kind of made sense, because then I heard originally it was supposed to be and I think Rob Mills did verify this. It was supposed to be the Hiltons versus the Kardashians. Right, I heard that. The Hiltons Didn't canceled. Show, yeah. So last minute, they're like, well, let's get some bachelor bums. <laughs> uh, and then thank God, Kanye. I, I, and then I, it, was, it was the West versus the Kardashians. Yeah, imagine, com- like imagine the conversation on a Friday night. You know, Kim and her mom are hanging out. And like, yeah, hey, we're doing Celebrity Family Feud. I guess we're going to do against the bachelors. And Kanye, like, wanting, having, like, I am not letting my wife, oh my you God. know. <laughs> low herself to like hang out with a bunch of bachelor people <laughs> he steps in and saves the day incredible and he actually probably just heard there was like a PR opportunity that he didn't know about and he was like no I want that that's probably my guess I am just surprised when it comes to the Kanye stuff that people like react and fall for it uh, I think 
I think if you really care about his music, you care about him, and he's an icon in your life. And if you disagree with him, but he's it's heartbreaking. He's doing it. There's a lot of theories. Some he people literally think it's came marketing. out and said, "I'm going to start tweeting." Yeah. And did you really expect him to tweet something uninteresting and whatever? Here's the thing. I think people who are upset about it are generally not in favor of the president. No, I get that. But it, but I think that one thing that is like kind of separate, like kind of been compartmentalized that shouldn't be is that supporting Trump is completely in line with enjoying being in the Kardashian family and wanting to, and you know, Kim Kardashian was his dream girl. And he made it happen. So this shouldn't be a surprise, but it is. But many people feel that it is. I guess I'm surprised that people are surprised right. that he tweeted something as obnoxious and as shocking as this stuff. Yeah. He's a provocateur and yes, he's successful because everyone's talking saying. about if it. If nothing else, he's that. I find it upsetting. Um, I just find, you know... I, it's disappointing. It's just not shocking. Yes. And I obviously watch a ton of reality TV, and but I happen to hate, despise the Kardashians and I hate the show. And so, you do? yeah, I've, I've actually only like seen like a, like one full episode, and I huh. I despise that whole type of reality television. I was never into the Hiltons. Like that's really not for me. In, in what way? What do you mean? Just I don't really like the sort of um, privileged family aspiring for more. I saw a tweet, something about Kim and Kanye showing their house or something, mm -hmm. and People Magazine was like their twenty million dollar house, and Kris Jenner wrote back wrong. Kind of Trump like in a way. Yeah. It's 60 million as if, like, yeah. I thought that was a bit tasteless, but people seemed, and I read, I was, I was surprised because re, I read in the comments, people just loved that Chris Jenner was like calling them out as if, I don't know, but whatever, you know. I don't, I don't like any of this. I don't like the Kardashians. I don't like the Jenners. I don't like Kanye. I don't like Trump. Okay. So, so, so the whole thing for me is, is, I expect this part to be cut out from the podcast. <laughs> no. Definitely not. I'm comfortable saying it, and it's fine. Um, the Kanye stuff, I think, is just complicated because I think it's hard for people who really like his music, who don't agree with him, mm -hmm. to sync those two things up. For me, it's just like sometimes just don't give people what they're trying. Like, if he's a provocateur, people sometimes, I'm surprised smart people will play into people's hands and just get the reaction that ultimately they're trying to get. And there's a lot of people who are just wasting a lot of energy on the situation, even us right now, yeah. would they they shouldn't be trying yeah. to like you hear how like John Legend like called Kanye. He, te he texted him and Kanye screenshot. Sure. It. And it's just like why is John Legend wasting his time? I get Because it's his good friend. Sure. But it's like I, went to I the don't college. even know Kanye, but everything I've heard is like Kanye will be Kanye. I went to the college dropout tour, Kanye's first tour mm -hmm. in the year two thousand four, two times in six weeks. And it was just Kanye on stage with his pianist and, like, backup singer. And it was John Legend. And John Legend was great and is great. I'm a huge John Legend yeah, defender. Yeah, fantastic. And also, I love him and Chrissy Teigen. They're, they are, like, just a wonderful couple. I saw mm -hmm. them at a party once, and they seemed really in love. I met her. She was very nice. Yeah. She's, they seem like awesome people. Just cool people. That are good at be, both good at being celebrities and also have chosen to align themselves with causes that I think are worthy. And just, like, humble to a point where, like, they don't even need to be, and they still are. She's quite honest in a way that I think many people find uncomfortable. She, I think she's just, yeah, she's she hasn't for it's. I, I don't even follow her, but she doesn't seem to forget where she comes from, and still has a level head about her life and who she is. And I mean, God, she she could be a total like she could be snob, a monster, yeah. And she's just chilling, totally cool. And now, you know, and I think that's great. It's true. Sometimes people are just afraid of honest and true things. That's so true, Nick. That's a great deep note to end this on. All right. Well, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Hope to have you back again soon. Let's get some dim sun. Okay. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks to Hotel Tonight. And I'll be back in two weeks. 